Hey, future respiratory therapist. So I have a series going here about ABG interpretations, and we're going to step in now to metabolic disorders. If you've seen any of my other videos, you know I've already talked about the resp respiratory disturbances being respiratory acidosis or respiratory alkalosis. Today we're going to get into metabolic disturbances, and we're going to start with talking about metabolic acidosis. Now, again, you see on the board here our normal pH values. I mean, our normal blood gas values. You have a pH 7.40. That's absolute normal. We know our range, right? 735 to 745. CO2 normal is 40. We know our range, 35 to 45 millimeters of mercury. And then we know our bicarb normal to be 22 to 26. Text vary, but 22 to 26 is what we're going with. Normal right here on this example being 24. Now, what we're talking about here is metabolic disturbances. So this is not... A problem that's going to be caused by a respiratory disturbance. Got it? So if it's a respiratory disturbance, then you're going to be seeing a disturbance that alters your CO2 levels and leads to a respiratory alkalosis or acidosis. But today we're talking about metabolic disturbances. Okay, so we're going to be talking about things that affect our bicarb. Okay, so let's talk about metabolic acidosis. Now, by this point, obviously, you understand that an acidosis is anything that takes your pH less than 7.35. So what I'm going to do here, since we're talking about metabolic acidosis, is talk about bicarb. And remember, I've told you before that bicarb pulls the pH in the same direction as it moves. So if you lose bicarb, so if bicarb goes down let's say to 18, okay? And your CO2 is initially going to stay normal, then you're gonna see your pH go down in the same direction as your bicarb. So your pH may go down to 7.25, okay? Again, Henderson, Hassel, Bach, me, I don't care, okay? But this is what we would look at and what we would see. Our CO2 has stayed in the normal range. Our bicarb has gone down, and that's going to pull our pH down. Now, what you need to understand here is that the reason a loss of bicarb going down will cause your pH to go down is because now there's less buffering agents available to buffer the acids in the body. If there's more acids running around freely, then obviously your pH has got to go down. That's what you have to understand. This is a why greater than how issue. This isn't a, oh, bicarb goes down, so pH goes down. No, this is a, why does pH go down when bicarb goes down? And the answer to that is, is you've lost buffering agents. So you have more acid in the body now than you do buffering agents, and that causes your pH to go down. Make sense? All right. So we look at this 7.25, 40, and 18. We're going to call this what? An uncompensated metabolic acidosis. Okay, shorthand there for you guys, but you can pause it, replay it, whatever. This is uncompensated. Why is it uncompensated? Because the CO2, the respiratory system, the compensatory mechanism has not kicked in yet. Okay, so you have more acid than you do buffering agent, and it's causing your pH to go down. Now, as the respiratory system kicks in and says, whoa, we got to get rid of some of this acid to bring the pH what? Back up. That's exactly right. We got to bring the pH back up. So the respiratory system will kick in and it will blow CO2 down. Okay? So as your CO2 goes down to 30 and your pH comes up to 7.30, your bicarb stays at 18. Now you will call this a partially compensated metabolic acidosis, okay? So this is partially compensated metabolic acidosis, okay? So is it fully compensated? Absolutely not. 
Is it uncompensated? No. It's in the process of compensating. So we call this partially compensated. Now some of you in your studies may be taught to call this a compensating metabolic acidosis. And that's fine. I don't care what you call it. Just know what it is and what's happening in the body. The respiratory system is trying to blow off and get rid of CO2 to bring the pH back up to compensate for this metabolic acidosis. Okay, now, as the body continues to blow off and get rid of CO2, you'll see CO2 continue to go down, bicarb will stay at 18, and your pH will come back in to normal range. So here we have a normal pH based off of our normal range, 735 to 745, on the acidotic side. Why? Because it's being caused by the drop in bicarb. But why is it back in normal range? Because the CO2 has been blown down to 25. The respiratory system has fully compensated now by getting rid of enough acid to give you a normal pH. So we're going to call this a fully compensated metabolic acidosis. Now, I know you can't read that. It's okay. You heard me say it, right? Pause it, replay it if you need to. Fully compensated metabolic acidosis. Okay? Now, when we talk about metabolic acidosis, you need to understand this. It's not simple. I'll put another video up breaking down the different causes of meta metabolic acidosis. I don't have enough time to do it in one video. But what you have to understand is that two things can cause a metabolic acidosis. You can have one, a loss of bicarb, which would be associated with diarrhea. Or you could have a gain of non-volatile acids, which would be something associated with lactic acidosis. Okay? And so those two different causes, did the body lose bicarb or did the body gain an excess of non-volatile acids that's, that's buffering all of your bicarb, okay? I'm going to get into that in another video. It's too much to get into right now. You have to get into the anion gap and calculating it. I'll do that in another episode, okay? So for right now, understand how to recognize an uncompensated metabolic acidosis, a partially compensated metabolic acidosis where the pH is still acidotic, but the CO2 has gone down, and how to recognize a fully compensated metabolic acidosis.